Let me show you something interesting in the Bible. It's called antiphrasis. That's the use of words in a sense opposite to their proper meaning as when a court of justice is called a court of vengeance. Vengeance. For example, in Job 2.9, it says, Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity, curse God, and die? Well, that word curse is Strong's 1288, the word, I'll look, here it'll say it. Strong's H1288, Barach, Barach. All right, let's go look at that word, Barach. It says here that Barach, by implication to bless God. Although it says here, by euphemism, to curse God. Euphemism is a representation of good qualities, particularly in rhetoric, a figure in which a harsh or indelicate word or expression is softened, or rather by which a delicate word or expression is substituted for one which is offensive to good manners or delicate ears. So, in fact, what they're using there is anti Phrases. If you look down in Genesis one twenty two, that same word uh, is used for blessed in English, and God blessed them, saying, "Be fruitful and multiply." Also in Genesis two three, and God blessed the seventh day, is again that Strong's Hebrew word twelve eighty eight. Uh, that word. Strong's H, 1288, Barach. So, Barach. so Barach is used to mean blessed all throughout, like Genesis 5, 2, male and female created he them and blessed them. That's Barach them. But if you go to Job, you see, then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity, curse God and die? In the Hebrew, that barach is actually uh, means bless, because they didn't want to say curse God in there. Also, if you look in 1 Kings 21.10 with Nabal, uh, when the people lied about him, and 1 Kings 21.10 says, And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. That word where they say um, blaspheme is that word barach. In fact, let's see if... We can, yeah, that would be right here. All right, and then in First Kings 21, 13, And there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him. And the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king, then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. Again, let's see, that blaspheme, they used the word barach there. And you see everywhere else in the Bible, the barach is used for blessed. And all the different versions, you can simply, uh, in fact, I'll link the page for this uh, in the bottom of the video so you can see all the different meanings of Barach, the places it's used is for blessed. So again, that is called antiphrasis. It's the use of words in a sense opposite to their meaning. Um, 
the Blue Letter Bible says it's a euphemism, uh, in this case, for an indelicate word or soften. So in the Hebrew, they just didn't want to use uh, curse in reference to God there. But I will note that for blaspheme, Psalm 7410, O God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? In there, they use Strong's Age 5006. Naats. Naats. And naats directly means something related to, um, to abhor, blaspheme, contempt, despise. Um, if you look in Revelation 13, 6, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his, his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. If you look, blas blasphemy is actually the Greek. Strong's G 988 blasphemia. Blasphemia. I believe that would be right here. Blasphemia. I hope you uh, found that interesting. Thank you.